Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Brian F here. And today I wanted to talk about a concept called progressive overload and how I think this can relate to training most effectively when it comes to fighting games, Street Fighter, and in many other aspects of life. If you're not familiar with progressive overload, it's a term used in the fitness and bodybuilding community regarding the training style where every time you work out, you aim to do a little bit more than the last time. And that can come in different ways. It's not necessarily always more weight. For instance, if you're doing bench press, if you did 135 for five sets, five reps, the next time you go to work out and do bench press, you should aim to do something a little bit more, maybe the same weight, but one more rep per set. The next time you go again, you do the same weight, maybe two more reps per set. And then once that becomes too easy, you can increase the weight instead. Now, you're not always upping the weight, upping the reps, or changing the amount of sets you're doing, but you're always doing a little bit more than the last time you went in. And that's the key in order to produce growth. And while that is effective in, in lifting, I think that's also a very effective mentality when it comes to training for fighting games. When practicing a fighting game against another human competitor, there's a certain skill gap range that is acceptable for you to have both an enjoyable experience playing the game and to be able to effectively learn from the match. If the skill gap is too large and your opponent is way better than you, you don't learn much from the experience. You might end up just watching yourself lose and not really understand why you're losing in the first place. Once that skill gap is shrunk, you're able to actually participate in the game. Maybe your opponent is still better than you, but you're able to see what is going wrong in the match. You're close enough in skill gap so that when your opponent outplays you in certain situations, you're able to recognize those situations and learn and identify them and perhaps improve upon that situation itself. Conversely, if you are ahead of your opponent in the skill gap, if the skill gap grows too large, you're simply stomping your opponent. You're not gaining much from the experience. Oftentimes, you're not gaining anything at all. You might be perfecting your opponent over and over in some kind of vortex situation where they simply don't know what to do. If you take this to the extremes of brand new player versus a veteran, the brand new player might not even know how to block and put any of the moves or play the game whatsoever. The veteran player gains nothing from the experience, and the beginner gets nothing but a beatdown and doesn't get to play the game whatsoever. It's not an effective learning experience for either player. This is where the concept of progressive overload as it relates to fighting games comes into play. The most effective range for learning versus another human opponent is when they are just better than you, where you're able to see what errors you're making, but you're also able to execute your own game plan and still exist within the game itself. Once you're able to recognize these errors and learn from them, that's where you begin to improve. Now, once you've improved, your base skill level has grown. You also need your opponent to continue to grow as well. This is what makes effective training partners. When one player happens to get the upper hand on the other, it's up to the player who's losing to adapt. If the gap grows too large and the player is unable to adapt, they cease to be effective training partners. This topic of discussion was inspired by a recent Twitter controversy, which stemmed from a tweet from a Smash Brothers player by the name of Deshizwiz. Deshizwiz teaches melee and coaches to newer players, and he mentioned that he doesn't like to be asked for friendlies from people who are just trying to learn from him. He's implying that players who are new to the game and weaker than him are taking advantage of his time by playing him for free when he offers paid lessons. While I don't agree with the Shizwiz here on a lot of points he's making, I do believe that you should be playing newer players in the community in order to help the community grow, offer advice, and help level up the community as a whole. It did get me thinking about how newer players oftentimes have an attitude of, to be the best, I have to play versus the best. And there's this sentiment that it's an effective training strategy to play people who are the best of the best at your game, and that's a really effective way to level up. I really don't think that's an effective strategy whatsoever. Playing someone who's extremely outside your skill level can be good for gaining perspective on just how much there is to learn, but it's not actually an effective manner of learning the game itself. I think this does stem from a lack of perspective for newer players of just how deep fighting games can be and just how much there is to learn at all levels of the game. If I try to make an analogy, I often compare it to if you're brand new to fighting games, brand new to Street Fighter or whatever, you're still trying to learn your ABCs. You don't even know the alphabet yet. It's really not effective to start trying to teach you poetry at the level of someone like a Daigo Omahara, a Tokido. 
um, when you're still just trying to grasp the absolute basics. It's just not effective. You have to learn some kind of baseline in order to build up from there. If you were to take this attitude into other competitive areas like actual sports, for instance MMA, it really wouldn't make much sense. If you're brand new to MMA and you want to learn how to fight, you're not going to immediately try to challenge the reigning championship and throw down in the ring because there's a very good chance you would actually be killed. While it's not as extreme with video games, of course, the same thing applies. You're going to be knocked out senseless and you're not really going to understand why that happened or what to do from there. It's not a good place to really learn. Now, I don't want to sound like there's absolutely no benefit to playing someone who's much better than you at a game, but what I am saying is there's some kind of base requirement before you're able to learn from such an experience. If you're brand new to fighting games, you're not going to learn much from playing Daigo Omahara. But if you have some base understanding of the mechanics of a game and you're able to play the game in a way where you understand what Daigo is doing to you, maybe you can ask some questions, maybe you can analyze the footage and you can gain something from it. So the main benefit to me from playing someone who's vastly outside of your skill level is perspective. You don't get the opportunity to test out nuke techniques. You might not be able to experiment as much, but you can at least get a view of what there is to learn and start establishing a roadmap of how to get there. It's much more effective to play people who are within a certain range of your current skill level. A range where it's comfortable enough to test out new ideas, where you still get beat but you're able to recognize what you did wrong, and you have a much clearer path of how to improve and are able to actually take steps to get there. As you continue to level up, in order to continue this progressive overload, you're going to have to find more and more resistance to your current level. Either your opponents that you're playing against need to get better, your training partners need to get better, but some kind of stimuli has to increase to match your current skill level. And this continuous progressive overload can provide a much more linear path into developing your skills of fighting game player. It's much more effective to start out with a limit that's just challenging enough for you to improve than to step into the squat rack, load 400 pounds, and immediately be crushed because you're nowhere near that level yet. So those are my thoughts of progressive overload as it relates to fighting games. If you're a new player, you should seek out players who are also close to you in skill level. This way you can have a good time learning and playing the game, but also still help each other level up. If you're an intermediate to an advanced player, I don't think you should be discouraged by not having access to the best players in the world that you see on the top eights of every CPT event. If there are other players who are near you in skill level, they can still help you improve. And that's all. Thanks so much for watching this video guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.